I think it's probably fairly safe to say that if you're a motorsports enthusiast, few things compare to endurance racing. That's the ultimate vision of racing because it combines strategy, perseverance, and a little bit of luck. Um, and, and of course, the time to participate. I always fancied myself as uh, somebody that would be a race car driver, and the fantasy of that really uh, encompassed competing in things like the 24 hours at Daytona or the 24 hours at Le Mans. Um, 12 hours at Sebring, six hours at the Glen, all of these big races that you hear about, you talk about, um, and you see people describe them as life-changing events. But of course, I'm not a race car driver. I am, at least not professionally, and I, um, that fantasy is, is been largely out of reach until I got deeply into sim racing. And luckily enough, iRacing puts on special events that uh, overlap or simulate the uh, real events um, in the time frame that they usually occur. And uh, here in June, the six hours at the Glen was the, the big race that we had opportunity to participate in. So that brings me to the other point of, of why I do my videos. One of the things that's been really interesting is that PCA Sim Racing has opened up doors for us to rub elbows with uh, people we may not have met because they attend events and are part of uh, Porsche Club of America in zones and regions that are remote from our own. And uh, PCA Sim Racing has taken this opportunity of virtual racing in pandemic times where getting out and about isn't always uh, the greatest option and has allowed us to meet virtually at these remote locations, put cars on track and race one another, race with one another and have a lot of fun. Well, out of that came uh, friendships with, uh, with three specific guys that I teamed up with for the iRacing uh, special events, Rob Cottle, Jeff Rosenthal, and Jeff Williams. The, uh, the three of them really become really good friends, close friends, and none of them have I met face to face, which I find really interesting, right? That's, that's kind of the, 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 the storyline of um, something that seems like a, maybe a game to some, um, a simulation and a serious racecraft to others is also an opportunity to really develop deep and meaningful friendships with people that you may not have run into otherwise. It's a special story, at least I think so. You're going to see um, uh, Rob Cottle, myself, and Jeff Rosenthal race in the Watkins Glen race. Unfortunately, Jeff Williams could not join us, but um, he participated a lot in helping us gather data uh, for prepping for the race, and um, his name's on the car, so his name's on the video as well, but just be forewarned, you won't see any segment of him racing. Unfortunately, he, he could not join us uh, the day of the race. This is a race happened on June 19th, 2021, and uh, I'm going to let you enjoy a little bit of a, a, a taste of what the day brought to us and, uh, and how we walked away from it. Hope you enjoy. So Rob actually got us started quite well. Um, he wound up qualifying us in P15 in class, P32 overall with a 148.816 putting us on grid. So one of the reasons why we actually love to have uh, Rob start races is that, um, unlike me, um, he, he winds up holding ground fairly well. So you actually see him uh, in this whole segment here where he actually uh, maintains station, stays P15, doesn't give up any ground to the other cars out there. In fact, uh, does a good job of trying to make up some ground um, early in the start. Um, I can be a little bit less aggressive on starts than Rob and uh, wind up falling back three, four, sometimes five places and then have to make that ground up later, which is always tough in a race. But here we got, you know, really good run uh, as he's out there uh, competing with some guys. And uh, overall, we were impressed with the level of competition and the, uh, the cleanliness of the racing overall. Um, and, you know, as things typically happen, Early in a race, um, people start separating out, and uh, we wind up having a good, a good go of it here uh, in terms of uh, getting a nice uh, single line of uh, cars, just sort of figuring out where they're going to be for a little bit of the race. Early going in an endurance race, of course, you have to keep in mind that it's a long race. There are a lot of laps still in front. In fact, uh, I think the uh, the LMP2s uh, um, are expected to be about 215 laps in this race. So there's a long, long day ahead of everybody at this point in the race, and uh, Rob is just settling in and uh, seeing what he can do.
One of the other challenges in endurance race starts, of course, is to recognize early on when you've got somebody behind you that's feeling racy early in and uh, figuring out if you're truly faster than them to keep them behind you or if you're better off letting them go by just because they're, they're obviously faster than you and they're acting, they're maybe a little less patient than you are in letting the race come to you. Um, letting them by is actually a good survival tactic and you'll see Rob here let a few guys by um, and give up a little bit of ground um, in the process but again that strategy for you know we got a full tank uh, the track temperature is actually really hot um, I think we started it was 113 degrees Fahrenheit on track so just you know keeping the car under us uh, letting the race come to us we're gonna let a few guys by and, and so Rob did a really good job of, of uh, figuring that out and letting a few of these, these guys that were a little bit racier go by and uh, who knows, up the road uh, a piece, maybe they get into trouble and uh, we make that ground up later. Don't move. Thank you. Unfortunately, not everybody is uh, patient enough and smart enough to realize that uh, not every moment is their moment and they push things a little bit too far in a bad place on the track, costing somebody a lot of time and uh, and really uh, almost kind of uh, impacting the rest of their day. Let's let's be frank. Um, and so, uh, guy behind Rob at this point is uh, pushing pretty hard. He sees him, uh, understands that he's there um, and is just waiting for an opportunity to let him by, um, hoping that he'll continue to be patient. But he uh, he gets a run um, coming into the bus stop and uh, that winds up spelling disaster for us as a uh, guy hits us and uh, puts, puts Rob into the wall, which uh, requires uh, Rob to come into the pits and uh, get a little bit of repair. And uh, it's the opportunity strategically for us to do a top off on his tank and uh, get him back out to, to circulate. This unfortunate series of events basically uh, took us from uh, uh, P15th in class, P33rd overall, 
all the way down to P32nd in the class, or P37 overall, which uh, at this point is, is uh, like a nice uh, gut punch, but at the same time, it's an opportunity for us to uh, bear down and uh, try to operate on this, uh, this change in strategy that we now have uh, being off cycle with our fuel. At this point, we actually begin to realize one fundamental truth of endurance racing is it's going to be a long day for everybody. And everybody's going to have their share of struggles and challenges that they're going to have to contend with. And here you actually see a whole sea of cars that Rob encounters on track that are all beginning to have what uh, they're going to consider as a really long day as well. Um, it's horrible to feel good about the struggles of others, but it puts your own into context. And uh, here we see some folks that may have had uh, day-ending events um, in the series of calamity that happened ahead of us, but we, uh, we come through a little bit behind it and uh, safely get through it, and Rob continues to move on. And move on he has. In fact, at this point in the race, Rob has uh, recovered fully from his lap four calamity and is put us back in 15th in class. Only an hour and 10 minutes in, we essentially get a do-over. And it's an opportunity for Rob and uh, Old Turtle Racing to make some ground. So what do you do when you have the class leader behind you, you have a slightly slower car in front of you, you've got a lot of challenges to deal with all at the same time. And one of the things that's a fundamental aspect of racing is it's a rhythm sport, meaning that you know once you find your way to dance with the track, you get into settled rhythms. And dealing with other traffic oftentimes can throw that rhythm off and produce some unexpected results.
target fixation can sometimes get the better of us and we wind up overcooking a twern. But here we've got a really interesting complex problem that uh, Rob and his spotter, me at the time, had to contend with is that here he is in a precarious spot on the track with poor visibility and we essentially have to turn around, right ourselves on track in a way that causes the least amount of potential for harm to others and additional harm to ourselves. And that's a true challenge. And we have to navigate this carefully and responsibly to make sure we don't hurt other people despite wanting to defend our P10 and class position at this point in the race. Rob did a masterful job in dealing with this very difficult situation and we only lost one position and class on track. After almost an hour and 27 minutes, Rob pits in P11. Full fuel, four tires, a nice uh, screen cleaning, and Rob jumps back out on track in P14 in class and P27 overall. Now we're 35 minutes into the race, lap 46 comes along and is Rob's fastest of the race. Also turns out ultimately to be our fastest lap uh, as a team. Slap was a 150.193 by Rob, and uh, might think that that's actually seeming a little slow. Have to keep in mind that track temperatures were getting uh, close to the 120 range at this point in the day, so everyone had slowed down considerably. Rob ends his double stint. At about two hours and 40 minutes into the race, he has us in P9 in class and P20 overall. That leaves it to the handoff, the driver change, where I get in the car and uh, take us out in P11 or P22 overall. So while I've got brand new tires, all four corners, I've also got a full tank and a 
Trek temperature that is right at 124 degrees Fahrenheit at the start of my stint here. So really, I've got a bunch of stuff that I'm thinking about here. One is that uh, getting a feel for the car under full load um, on these hot, hot temperatures and getting a sense of the multi-class traffic. So a lot of stuff uh, uh, going through my mind and core among them is making sure I keep the car safe and uh, hold position, if not gain some position, as I begin to make my way through the stent. by Steven. Thank you. Multi-class traffic is uh, one of the more challenging aspects of racecraft to learn to develop. And what's really interesting is that while it remains true that the responsibility for conducting a safe pass is on the faster car making that pass, Come on by, yeah. Yeah, it's also Come on, in this sort of a scenario on this complex of track, it's really a dance, is that you have to be willing Donna, to so compromise you yourself a little bit off, in order to make sure that both classes of car get through a particular complex of turns as quickly as possible. This creates opportunity and also opens up some interesting challenges, especially if you're in a tight, close race. But this is something that you have to learn to contend with and time appropriately. Watching your mirrors, listening to your spotter, and making intelligent decisions to, you know, give where you would normally be taking um, in, a, in a single class sort of scenario. Very, very fun racing, but also very taxing both mentally and physically. The other challenge when you're racing is that you can occasionally encounter back markers. You can see I'm coming up on um, a, a car that is a back marker and uh, is further back in the class from where I am. I'm in P10 and I think that he's probably uh, close to a lap down behind me in, uh, in P13, P14. Um, I don't remember exactly which, but regardless, uh, he is behind me, but yet he's in front of me on track. One of the reasons that this becomes a challenge is that people that are not keeping track of their relatives, or even if they are, nobody likes to be passed. Um, and a lot of times you will find people will be racing you, but they're not even in the same race as you. And you have to figure out what you can and can't do with that car in terms of uh, making aggressive moves, because uh, if they're gonna be defensive, they could put you in peril and wreck an otherwise uh, decent outing. So you have to 
make some choices to compromise and uh, make a move only when it's guaranteed. So you'll hear, uh, you'll see I'll, I'll dance with this car for quite a while, get a sense of how he drives his lines, um, and uh, then eventually we'll, we'll make a move. So clearly at this point, I am thoroughly convinced that I'm faster than he is, but I also know that I need to bide my time just a little bit longer to make sure I make a safe pass, because as you saw that last lap, I am making ground on the field. I went from P11 to P10 just because of attrition, people being in the pits um, and us being slightly off cycle. So I don't want to compromise myself by getting too aggressive with this guy because we are close to the same speed, but I am faster than he is by a bit. Um, I don't want to overcook my stuff and uh, wind up uh, losing out that ground that I've worked so hard to gain. And of course the multi-class traffic doesn't go away. We still have the LMP2s circulating around coming up on us. Here you'll actually see a LMP2 come up and flash its lights indicating that he is definitely going to be passing me. Um, and the obvious choice for him is to pass me on the come right on back, Cody. Um, and uh, take the inside of the first turn um, if he doesn't get me in the straight. So that's, uh, that's uh, another way that uh, faster cars communicate with you on track and let you know what's going on. Car position is everything, so if you have a desire to head that for that LMP2 car to pass you in a particular place, you need to make sure that you are using body language, as it were, to communicate clearly so that they make the right decision as they go around you. Another aspect of dealing with a car that you're anticipating passing is that uh, you can show him your nose and show different lines. Um, and this is all in anticipation of figuring out what he's going to do, where he's going to do it, but also to get in his head. If he starts watching his mirrors, um, you likely are going to force him into a mistake of some sort that you can then capitalize on. This is another aspect of racecraft that is kind of fun to develop, but it's also it's difficult to know when and how to do this because obviously if you're taking lines that are not the optimum line, you're compromising some speed as well. So it's a matter of uh, making sure that uh, what you're doing is in the best interest of your efforts and that you're not compromising yourself too much in terms of uh, positioning the car in a place that, that makes it likely that you could spin out or have, have some sort of another issue or worse, lose ground that you have gained on uh, making that pass attempt.
Hold on, Yurkut. So at this point, I've played with him long enough. I understand uh, how he's driving his race line, um, what he's likely to do. So I let him draft and make a move on him on the inside coming into the bus stop and uh, make the pass stick with a clean exit. And of course, uh, because I was faster than he was, I'm able to gap him fairly quickly as well. So as patient as I was uh, at that point, I'm now in P9 and going along um, and I happen across a car that is slower than I am and rather than exercising prudence, I try to get around him more quickly. But of course what this does is it creates a little bit of target fixation where I'm no longer paying attention to what's coming up behind me. And unfortunately, by the time my spotter tells me that I've got an LMP2 coming down on me, um, I am unable to adjust what I've started doing and uh, put myself in a bad way. Now, this particular incident is really, I think, the LMP2 car's fault in terms of, you know, he's trying to execute a high-speed pass um, and winds up hitting me. But by that same token, and in the words of uh, the wise one, Rodney, uh, <laughs> I put myself in a situation where I got hit. So these four incident points that I accumulate in this, uh, this segment is uh, definitely um, my fault as well. Luckily, I'm no worse for wear and remained in P8 after the exchange.
One of the things that is always stressed when you're uh, going through an EDE, learning how to drive, is you always want to give the other guy a little bit of room, especially if he's faster than you, going to make a move. Um, you want to make sure that uh, you don't wind up compromising your race by trying to squeeze him off or come down on an apex that he's going to be occupying. In this particular case, I gave, uh, gave my competitor plenty of room. Unfortunately, he um, wound up drifting to the outside a little bit and, and squeezed me off and uh, I wound up having to slow down to make sure that we didn't have an incident. But uh, all things being equal, um, that's uh, the, the being aware of your surroundings and uh, making sure your competitors have the space they need to do what they need to do. Three hours and 54 minutes in, I pit in P sixth in class, P 17th overall, coming in for full fuel, four tires, and a windshield clean. Coming back out for my second stint, I have lost three positions. I'm P 9 in class, P 20th overall. At this point in the race, I just finished off my fastest lap of my two stints at a 150.917 on a track that has come down from being 126 degrees Fahrenheit at its peak in my first stint down now to 113 degrees Fahrenheit. So I'm getting a little bit more stick in the uh, tires despite them being extremely uh, well worn at this point and at nearing the end of my stint. But I am in P4, which so I've made up some ground from P9 in the previous segment, but I also have the P5 in class car bearing down on me and uh, prepared to take that position away on track um, as I'm not quite as fast as he is at this point.
It's worth mentioning at this point that mental exhaustion is definitely part of the gameplay here, is that after over two hours in the car straight, um, you start to uh, feel very tired, you're hungry, um, you're ready to get out of the car, but it's also the time where you need to focus, uh, maybe slow things down, back, back your braking points up just a hair to make sure that you bring in the car safely for the next driver change. As I pit in at the conclusion of my double stint, we are in P5 in class, P16th overall, and ready for the handoff to Jeff Rosenthal. Jeff gets four freshies, full fuel, and a windshield tear off, and jumps back out on track. Still in P5 in class, P18th overall. At this point in the race, we've got about 50 minutes to go, and Jeff is riding in P5 and class and is doing quite well driving really steady and he encounters a back marker that is actually p20 in class that he is able to pass but then that back marker doesn't quite go away
This is that risk I was talking about earlier, is where you have someone that is really not the same race you're in, but still feels compelled to race you because you're in front of them on track and uh, it, it doesn't matter to them that uh, they have nothing to gain by pushing their situation with you and they put things at risk. So you have to be aware of these folks and make sure you make allowances for them, lest the worst happens. And unfortunately, that one moment, that mishap, winds up costing us uh, one class position on track, falling from P5 down to P6. But Rosenthal puts his head down and very quickly recovers that position, regaining P5. We've finally gotten to the last 10 minutes of the six hour race and uh, Jeff Rosenthal has a bit in his teeth. One of the things we did not realize at this point uh, as we were spotting for him is he's been carefully monitoring the interval between himself and the P4 car. And it started off uh, early in his stint to uh, be somewhere around 93 seconds and over the course of his time in the car, we've been seeing it shrink really, really, slowly but still shrink down. At this point in the race uh, it's at uh, 37 seconds uh, and so he's got um, 37 seconds to make up to catch the P4 car and possibly implement a pass and literally about 10 minutes or so to do it. And uh, so this is the type of driver that Jeff Rosenthal is, is once he gets a bit in his teeth, if he sees that there's something that's a goal to be accomplished, he's gonna try to do it. Now I'll uh, let you watch the remaining 10 minutes of this race uninterrupted and enjoy as Jeff continues to close that gap. Really, 23? That is twice you brand us in braking zones. That's fucking ridiculous.
the last freaking lap. Why are you doing this? Uh, GG everyone. We have really fun racing in uh, for the past six hours. Um, even though we did get a lot of damage, but yeah, really fun time. And uh, good luck in the uh, future events you all. Everybody, you 99%. It was an experience. Oh man, six hours, so uh, <laughs> uh, that was a good fun. Uh, well done, Dan. Congrats. So, man. while Jeff is unable to actually close the gap uh, to get to a pass, he is able to cut the margin by an additional six seconds down to 31 seconds to P4 before race ends. Ultimately, Jeff crosses the line, bringing us home sure in P5 uh, in really class nice, nice P17 day, overall, which is a tremendous accomplishment. The fact that we finished the race is the first accomplishment. The second one is to have done as well as we did, given the problems that we had earlier in the race. Credit to all. Great drive by Rob Cottle to recover us. Great drive by Jeff Rosenthal to bring us home. And uh, great team effort overall. So we didn't do too bad. Actually was pretty pleased with our outing, um, despite some challenges early in the race that uh, we had to overcome. We wound up coming away with 5th in class and 17th overall. Strength of field was 1084, so bottom split. But still, um, a pretty good outing, all things considered. Um, down here we are um, in our lovely team name, uh, Altus Schildkroten Renan, um, Old Turtle Racing. Um, and uh, um, you can see here that uh, Rob actually put in Yeoman's work uh, with the 79 laps. We did a little bit of a strategy call there uh, after his fourth lap incident his lap four incident, not his fourth lap incident, his lap four incident, um, we decided to fill the tank up and uh, use the, the requirement of him having to come into the pits as an opportunity to just sort of top him off and get him back out. Um, so that had the net effect of him doing um, three more laps than a standard um, two double stent um, would, would, have, uh, would have put him in it doing. Um, Total iRacing gain there, 30 points, uh, finishing P5 in class. Um, 0.05 um, safety rating bump um, with the 16 incident points over those 79 laps. Um, I drove 76 laps. I got a 28 point I rating bump, uh, 0.25 safety rating bump uh, with the four incidents over those laps. And of course, uh, Jeff Rosenthal. I think Jeff Rosenthal, despite driving fewer laps than either one of us, may have had the toughest job is that um, we handed the car over to him with, uh, I think, something close to 50 minutes left in the race and said, have fun. Um, and that, that's, that's a tough situation. Uh, he said that he, he kept saying to himself over and over, don't screw up, don't screw up. Uh, and he, he didn't. He's a great driver um, and uh, he was the right guy for the job um, and uh, wound up for his efforts over those 33 laps getting a, a, a 12 point bump in his I rating and a 0 0.04 pump in his safety rating uh, despite the five incidents over those laps. We we had a great time and I think that really is what the punctuation on all this is, is we had uh, a rough go, we supported each other through it and uh, uh, drove on. Um, I think we were the last car rolling um, in terms of um, uh, at the end of the race, the last lap, I think the, the 18th, 19th cars, they fell off a couple of laps um, before the end of the race. So um, it represents the perseverance of finishing uh, an endurance race. And that's something that is exceedingly rare, really. Um, a lot of people wind up falling off, getting demoralized and punching out um, before they finish the race. And um, one of the things that uh, we, we committed to was uh, regardless of what happens, unless we were basically in a situation we couldn't 
we would. We would keep on going and, and see what the day brought us. And uh, in this particular situation, uh, it brought us P5. So we're pretty proud of that. So I hope you enjoyed this. And uh, we're going to continue to do these as they show up. I think there's a race in July. So be on the lookout for that. And uh, we hope you'll join us. Hey, like and subscribe. Um, if you like the content, uh, make sure you subscribe so you get notified when I launch new videos. And uh, if you did like this content, uh, clicking on like helps the YouTube algorithm show it to other folks. So please do help out in that regard. Do appreciate you watching and have a great day. Bye-bye. Spaß machen Rennsport.